Hello everybody, welcome to another Arty Mouse episode. Today I'm going to show you how automata work and give you some ideas for making two of your own from things you already have around the house. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what you might make and show us in the Arty Mouse Facebook community group when you've created something new. We love to see people's work there and share ideas, so come and join in. The first automata began as an embellishment of clocks in the 14th century. It wasn't a huge leap for watch and clock makers to move towards aesthetic mechanical objects after all. One of the most famous is the astronomical clock in Prague, which draws crowds to this day. The figures were added in the 17th century, but the clock has been keeping time at the old town hall since 1410, and it is the oldest clock still in operation. The figures move hourly and represent vanity, miserliness, death and lust. The apostles also appear through their windows, presumably to chastise such earthly sins. In the 18th century, watchmaker Pierre Jacques Droz was creating mechanical caged songbirds and animated dolls to help his firm sell watches. His most impressive works were three mechanical dolls, the writer, the musician and the draftsman. All the dolls have their mechanics enclosed within their bodies and are particularly impressive. The writer, for example, will hold a quill, dip it in an inkwell and actually write on the paper presented to it. It can be programmed to write different things and all this years before Charles Babbage was even born. There's a link below to footage of it working. Take a look, it's truly amazing. The Victorians loved automata and many were made as curiosities and toured the country amazing audiences and raising questions about the nature of life, whether we ourselves were mechanical objects rather than spiritual beings. Some still exist today in museums and are maintained as marvels of engineering. Many were sold as toys and those of us who grew up with the mechanical toys of Fisher Price will understand the fascination. So the basic principle for an automaton is having a rod with cams, which are cogs essentially, like in a clock. You can either have cams that have a hole in the middle so that they rotate and they spin something because it's getting pushed forwards or backwards. But you can also have cams that have a hole on the edge and that means that something will move up and down because the circle that it's moving isn't consistent and it will push something above it up and down as it goes around. So I'm going to show you two little automatons today. One is quite simple with a frog and a fly and the other is a set of dancers. So, if I take my box that I have two holes in the top and I have two holes in the side and I take my chopstick. Now chopsticks are good to use because they are, if, if you take a cross section they're square which means that as you add a piece of cardboard it's not going to twist about, it's going to stay solid where it is. I have one can with a hole in the middle and then I have my one can with its hole on the edge. So one of my pieces is going to go up and down and the other piece is going to go round and round. If you think about this, the limits of your imagination are endless for any kind of automaton you want to make. There we are. So my chopstick with my two cans is inside the box now, able to spin. I then have another piece of card little piece of wood on it to hold my fly. So he is going to spin. So he needs to be on the cam that is with his hole in the middle. Just put them together so you can see. Alright. So he is on his little cam. He's going round and round. So remember their meeting point has to be at the side. If you put your meeting point in the middle and it goes round and round, nothing's going to happen. It has to be on the edge so that the top can turn. 
Yeah, it's going back to me. Then I have another one for my frog. So, again, my piece of downing is going inside my other cap. So one is going round and round and the other. You can see the stick here is going down as it comes out. So, my little frog is just here. And my stick is under his mouth. So my spinning fly has been chopped up by my frog that's out from me this mouth <laughs> Okay, so that's the very simple basic principle. Artists today still make, exhibit and sell automata. Two notable artists are Keith Newstead, a British artist with a very quirky style, creating curiosities with humour, and Martin Smith, also British, whose art is more about creating installations of fine art that interact with the space around them through repeated movements. There are links to their work below for you to follow and enjoy. You can buy automata kits to get you started like this one from your local, friendly, neighbourhood Jeff Bezos store. They're a good way to figure out how different kinds of movements are engineered. But to get you started, here's another homemade idea for you to work on. You can have more than one thing happening. If I were to have my can that goes, that makes something spin, and my can that makes something go up and down, work on the same object, what do you think is going to happen? Tell me in the comments. So now we have two sets of cans for this piece. And we're going to move something up and down and round and round at the same time. So they're level with each other. Parallel with each other. So it actually moves at the same time. I'll put them into my box. Make sure they're level with holes. So now I have two sets of cans underneath the holes at the top of the box. And again, I need my horizontal cans. So now most of my dancers are going to move around and go up and down at the same time. So there is absolutely no limit to this. You can, you've perhaps seen automatons in the shop that are really, really complicated. You've seen the artists that I've mentioned work on these and come up with some beautiful things. So there really is no limit to this and you can start with virtually no equipment because the principle is very, very simple. So tell me in the comments what you're going to do or show me on the Facebook group, Artie Mouse Art Tutorials, what you have made when you've had a go or even on Instagram, I'm at Artie Mouse 76 and show us what you're gonna do. See you soon. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what you might make and show us in the Arty Mouse Facebook community groups when you've created something new. We love to see people's work and share ideas there, so come and join in. You can also post things on Instagram and link to Arty Mouse 76 or email me directly on the link below if you have any creative questions or need to troubleshoot what you're working on. I look forward to hearing from you. See you soon. Bye!